Hello friends, good afternoon to you. Um, we're continuing our study in the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from God's Word translation again. Um, John chapter 3, the first 21 verses. Of course, if you know, um, this is probably the most well-known scripture passage. And it's the most detailed. Um, it talks about... Um, um, we, we must be born of the Spirit, and we must be born again, um, not by flesh and blood, but but by water and the Spirit. Um, um, the two people talking here is Nicodemus and Jesus. Um, this scripture passage is basically self-explanatory in most cases, um, very easy to read. Almost everyone knows this passage, especially verse 16. Um, so, um, uh, this this passage is well liked by um, you know scholars and theologians and everyday people. It's easy to. Um, um, a lot of people get a lot out of this passage because it tells how exactly what Jesus was sent on earth to do. Uh, so let's begin verse number one. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and member of the Jewish council. He came to Jesus one night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that God has sent you as a teacher. No one can perform the miracles you perform unless God is with him. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, I can guarantee this truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus asked him, How can anyone be born when he's an old man? He can't go back inside his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered Nicodemus, I guarantee this truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the spirit. Flesh and blood give birth to flesh and blood. But the spirit gives birth to things that are spiritual. Don't be surprised when I tell you that all of you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you don't know where the wind comes from or where it is going. That's the way it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Nicodemus replied, How can that be? Jesus told Nicodemus, You're a well-known teacher in, of Israel. Can't you understand this? I can guarantee this truth. We know what we're talking about, and we confirm what we've seen, yet you don't accept our message. If you don't believe me when I tell you about things on earth, how can you believe me when I tell you about things in heaven? No one has gone to heaven except the Son of Man who came from heaven. As Moses lifted up the snake on a pole in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Then everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world this way, he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not die but will have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world but to save the world. Those who believe in him won't be condemned, but those who don't believe are already condemned because they don't believe in God's only Son. This is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people loved the dark rather than the light because their actions were evil. People who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. They don't want their actions to be exposed. But people who do what is true come to the light so that the things they, they do for God may be clearly seen. Okay, this is a pretty deep passage, um, but it's clearly explanatory. I'm not going to 
cover each verse, but um, uh, Nicodemus um, was a ruler of the Jews. Um, he was a Pharisee. Um, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees didn't. Didn't. They're sad. You see. You understand. Um, and so Nicodemus realized that Jesus was someone extraordinary. Um, he basically said, "We know that God has sent you to teach and to perform miracles and so forth." And you know, and Jesus tells him plainly, "No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above." Um, and Jesus is going to cover this throughout the rest of this gospel. Um, so before warned um, not there's any true warning about that um, uh, so in verse 4 um, how can anyone be born when he's an old man he can't go inside his m mother's womb a second time and be born uh, I added a word there to make it more sense uh, you know I don't think Nicodemus was he knows that someone can't be born physically again in his mother's womb. You think it's more of like a rhetorical question. You know, and hey, Jesus has the answer. I guarantee this truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. <clears throat> in verse 6, flesh and blood give birth to flesh and blood, but the spirit gives birth to things that are spiritual. So, uh, we must be born again. We must be born with God's Spirit. And who is God's Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Um, don't be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. You know, the wind blows where it wants to, you know, and you hear it sound, but you don't know where the wind is coming from or where it's going. So, um, and Nicodemus is asking, how can that be? You know, he don't understand. You know, Jesus tells him, you're a teacher of Israel and you don't understand this. You know, basically it's simple truth and you don't even understand it. Um, you know, and Jesus continues saying, I guarantee this truth that we know what we're talking about and we confirm what we have seen, but yet you don't accept our message. Um, Jesus is indirectly quoting Isaiah 53 verse 1 um, you know who's believed our message and whom to the arm of the Lord has revealed so forth um, you can read that um, I, I advise you to read chapter 53 of Isaiah good passage um, uh, verse uh, uh, verse 12 if you don't believe me I, I tell you thing if you don't believe me when I tell you things on earth, how will you believe me when I tell you things about things in heaven? No one has gone to heaven except the Son of Man who came from heaven. So basically, only Jesus has truly been to heaven um, because he is God and he's not a created being. I'm going to keep telling people this because a lot of people say, oh, he's a created being, he can't be God. But God is not a created being. He, um, a created being can't die for the sins of the world. Uh, remember that. Verse 14. Just as Moses lifted the snake on a pole in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Then everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Uh, Jesus uh, is basically calling himself him. He's not given his his physical name but Nicodemus knows who Jesus is talking about he's talking about himself uh, you know um, and verse 16 God's, God loved the world this way he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him will not die but have eternal life God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but to save the world and so you know God has an ultimate salvation plan that everyone, he wants everyone to be saved, but not everyone is going to accept the truth that Jesus is the Son of God. Verse 18, those who believe in him won't be condemned, but those who don't believe are already condemned because they don't believe in God's only Son. So those who don't accept Jesus Christ, you know, 
is if they don't confess their sins and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as far as the Bible is concerned, you know, they're basically their fate's already sealed. Um, verse 19, this is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people love the dark rather than the light because their actions are were evil. Um, look at the world today. It's filled with evil. Um, people like to do all these sinful acts, you know. There's people in Hollywood, they drink, they use drugs, you know. You know, they try to get their lives in order, but yet they fall into the same sins. And, is, you know, but Jesus Christ can get them out of it if they truly believe. Um, Jesus Christ can save everyone from all sorts of evil only if they believe. Verse 20, people who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. They don't want their actions to be exposed. You know, if you've ever watched the news when someone does something totally wrong, like um, like a Ponzi scheme, like Bernie Madoff, um, you know, they try to hide their faces. They're so ashamed, you know, that their sin has been uncovered. Their shame has been uncovered. They're, you know, basically their actions are nothing but filthy rags. Um, not that I have anything against them, but, you know, that's what the Bible is, is saying here. You know, people do evil things. So, in verse, um, uh, and 21, but people who do what is true come to the light so the the things they do for God may be clearly seen. So if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and spirit, you know, and you do what he requires, you know, hey, he's going to bless you for it. Um, so, you know, Jesus loves us, and he wants to share his peace with us, and he wants us to share his peace with others that are broken down and hearted. Um, um, find this YouTube user uh, here on YouTube, Daryl Myatt, 1963. He's a great man of God, and he's currently going through a series of uh, Bible videos talking about suffering. I honestly, you need to check him out. He gives you the latest news of the day regarding the United States, Israel, and the world. You must hear him. He's a really good. Um, He's a strong man of God, and he loves God, honestly. Uh, send your comments, prayer requests, um, anything of that nature. Um, you can make a comment below in the box. And remember, God loves you, and so do I.